Have you ever wondered why there's so many shaders in computer graphics? You've got vertex shaders, fragment shaders, tessellation shaders, tessellation evaluation shaders, geometry shaders, compute shaders, and that's just for OpenGL. Vulkan and DirectX 12 have ray generation shaders, closest hit shaders, any hit shaders, and more, all just for ray tracing. The reason for this large number of shader types is pretty straightforward. GPUs, until relatively recently, were not good for general purpose computing. Early GPUs were extremely limited with what they could do with the data you sent them, which led leading APIs to develop specialized shader types to allow for otherwise impossible tasks. A very general example of these limitations is shown by vertex shaders. Vertex shaders can only move or modify the vertex data you give them, but cannot add or remove vertices. This makes things like GPU dynamic level of detail difficult, as you need a way to dynamically remove vertices based on camera distance. Geometry shaders were introduced to allow for more complex vertex modifications, but were so unperformant that it's now considered bad practice to use them in industry applications. Later on, tessellation shaders were introduced to allow for even more complex vertex modifications and subdivisions, and while they were an improvement from geometry shaders, they still left much to be desired in terms of control. Then came compute shaders, which allowed programmers to write general purpose code to run on the GPU. However, it was not directly tied into the rasterization pipeline, so modifying vertex data and compute shaders, while possible, required an uncomfortable amount of overhead. As the needs of graphics programmers grew, so did their frustration with the rasterization pipeline. Then, in 2018, NVIDIA changed the game entirely. NVIDIA asked, why don't we replace the vertex shader with something entirely new, a mesh shader, that behaves like a compute shader and is directly incorporated into the graphics pipeline? This absolute game changer for technology gave programmers complete freedom to modify, generate, and delete vertex data on the GPU, all in a single shader, and opened the door to technologies like mesh-like culling and level of detail, which is the same tech used in Unreal Engine's Nanite. So how exactly do mesh shaders work? How are they different from vertex shaders? Are they harder to use? When can I start using them? I can explain if you just calm down! <laughs> Let me do my best to answer these questions quickly. Firstly, mesh shaders work very differently from vertex shaders. Instead of being run on an entire mesh, mesh shaders can typically only operate on a maximum of 256 vertices. To allow this to work on meshes with millions of vertices, we subdivide the mesh into meshlets. If you've ever seen the cool nanite visualization with all the colorful patches everywhere, those are meshlets. We can then run an optional amplification shader, which allows the GPU to dispatch mesh shaders on our meshlets instead of the CPU. This step, however, is not required, and we can just dispatch our mesh shaders on the CPU for simplicity, though it is less performant. Each meshlet then has a mesh shader applied to it, which can add or remove vertices as needed. Cool, bro. After this step, a standard fragment shader is run on the resulting meshlet, and you can get your results on the screen. Admittedly, this is a dramatic oversimplification of the process and skips over some of the more difficult aspects of mesh shaders. Like how do you handle UVs for an entire mesh when it's been split up into hundreds of these meshlets? And how do you do skeletal animations? But hopefully you get the gist of how this new rasterization pipeline works. Secondly, mesh shaders are still in their infancy. Currently, Vulkan, DirectX 12, Metal, and OpenGL support mesh shaders through extensions, and there are relatively few resources online explaining how to use them, at least for beginners. That being said, I do plan to experiment with mesh shaders in the future, and will be sure to document the process. This may very well happen on a live stream, though, as making these videos is very time-consuming, and when school kicks in again, I am once again going to be swamped. If, however, you want to learn mesh shaders right now, I would highly suggest watching this talk by Radoslaw... Radoslaw Paskowski. Oh my gosh, I butchered that. Which I will link in the description, by the way. In conclusion, mesh shaders have the potential to dramatically alter the way we write rendering code and allow for much greater flexibility in how we handle vertex data on the GPU. On the channel front, I hope to start live streaming more regularly and have recently begun working on a new project that I'm really excited about. I don't want to give too much info away, but I'm trying my hand at graphics programming in the browser. I plan to start live streaming development soon, but don't really know how regularly I'll do so. College is really busy. Help me! Help me! If you do like the videos I make though, and you want to see more of them, please drop a like and subscribe. These videos take a long time to make, and I know they're not the best quality, but they really are me trying my best. And any support really does help. That being said, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Peace.